Hi, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs. Welcome to our road like tutorial. Man, I'm still like, oh man, I had the bug from last episode is still in my bones. But uh, yeah, it's it's working. We are now having starting to have like really nice dungeons going on. So this is great. I love it. There's still a lot missing here. Ooh, I don't like the stair there. Do you see the stairs? Mm, don't like those stairs. But you know, this doesn't have to always be be beautiful. So today what we're going to do is um, we want to have like a starting position, we want to have an end position. Uh, because right now we're just always starting, you know, in this... Wow, that's weird. Uh, always starting in this corner and sometimes like in the middle of, of a wall. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I want to have now like, okay, I want the, the, the program to pick a good starting and end position for us. Um, how? How, how are we going to find, find out? What is a good starting and end position? Um, to me, a good starting position, uh, like, a, like good positions to start and end with, are positions that are far away. I think if you're starting and it, like next to it is, you is the stairs, that's kind of like, okay, goodbye then, I guess, <laughs> right? So I want you, I want to force the player to force, like sounds very uh, serious. I want to make the player go to this level a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's do that. Let's let's make them. So how do we make that? Uh, if you think about this, actually, we already have all the tools that we need to in order to pull this off. Um, here's going to be the process. I'm going to explain the process verbally, and then we're going to program this. We are going to pick a random position in our map that is a free space, a random position. Then we are going to uh, create a distance map to that position, a distance map. Then we are going to find the spot furthest away from that point. This is going to be a starting point. Then we're going to create a distance point from the starting distance map from the starting point, and we're going to find the place furthest away from the starting point. This is going to be kind of like our end point. And then it's going to be maybe a little bit about finding out a good position of the stairs in, in those locations. Something I kind of like is when the stairs are kind of like in an alcove. So it's not, they're not like in the open, but you can, but we're actually going to, going to use our worm function, our can carve function. We're going to use it to find a space like nearby, a wall in nearby that we can carve into. Uh, and then that, that there we're going to put in our our stairs. About the entrance, I'm not sure. Usually I had like the same, like last time around, I had the same procedure for the stairs, but this resulted in a bit of an unpleasant situation where sometimes you would arrive and there was just one exit from the stairs and there were monsters swarming around you, so you immediately was kind of, you, you, you were caught, you were captured basically. There were not a lot of strategic options for you there. Uh, so maybe we're going to change this a little bit. But uh, for now, I'm also, I would be happy if we're going to use, uh, if we're going to just do, replicate the function that last time around. Now this will be, compared to our, to the prototype I had, this will be, this will be very different in either way because um, I, I, I made some experiments last time that I'm not going to repeat this time around. So we're going to call this function start and it's not very, very great name but uh we're gonna take it oh, man this this out of memory i swear so this is no longer doorways um this is going to be a kind of something something different i'm going to call this part decoration it's not really decoration it's actually a very significant part of of the level design but we're going to call it de decoration it's not decoration but it's part of the decoration Fun. So we're gonna do. We're gonna first find a random spot, uh, and again, I don't like like the randomly poking stuff in it because you kind of have to. You kind of have to, you know, do the thing. You have to actually go the extra, extra, extra mile. So we're gonna go like pxpy. That's gonna be the player x player y, basically entrance, and then um, yeah, and then we're gonna figure out stuff. Okay, so px um, equals floor are in random 16, right? So this is going to be a random coordinate and PY is going to be the same. And we're going to loop until is walk able PX PY. Okay, we found a random location. And you know what? 
let us set the stairs uh, 15 let us set them there just just to see how this will look like okay so we're gonna go m set uh, px py uh, what was the <laughs> I, I have a memory of a of a, of a goldfish 13 13 okay where's the stairs I don't see the stairs oh it, it's not 13 what am I it's it's 15. Okay, so now the stairs appear at random locations. It's it's fine. Um, something I want to maybe do here is I want to actually put the player um, at that position. So um, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. Uh, I had like a different function that was taking care of setting up the level that was um, separate from the map generation. So uh, right now I'm just going to go pmob dot x equals um, Oh, I cannot do that um, because I have to loop through the entire array. So, uh, you know, uh, we're just going to do a hack here right now. We're going to set the stairs here. I'm going to set the pmop in here. Again, it's going to be a hack. Later on, we're going to do maybe a more, more cleaner function. And I'm going to do a star here just to remind us that this is going to be something that we might change here. Okay, so now our character always starts at the stairs. Uh, but the stairs are kind of random and what we want to have kind of have now is we want to have like an exit for for them to that should be far away like in this map ideally it would be on the right side somewhere right that that would be get great if the stairs was there so that, so you can actually have to walk through this entire dungeon and and actually find the stairs oh there's interesting look at this oh i'm not sure why this is but um you see how they did, didn't connect the the hallway downstairs that's bad Actually, it didn't connect a bunch of stuff. That was weird. Maybe the fill ends? No, now it's working. Maybe something went wrong with fill ends in this one? We have to pay attention to this. The problem with the procedural generation as well is that if uh, you get a level that is broken, it's sometimes uh, difficult to find, to replicate that problem. <laughs> uh, no, that one seems to be working. Okay, not sure what happened there. Uh, we're gonna pay close attention to that one. Um, let's earmark this for, for, for a second here. Good. Um, okay, so now we're gonna have to find a location that is very far away from, from this spot. Um, I had a function for that called far place, but I'm not sure if I actually need that. I might not need, I, it could be a good good solution for this, but um, yeah, I'm not sure if I need this. So, okay, so we're gonna go dist map pxpy, right? I'm gonna create a distance map uh, to this, this thing, and we're just gonna loop through uh, the entire map. And you know, this will, this will, we're gonna do this a bunch of times now. Uh, and, we're gonna go like um, let's call it exey. Uh, actually, no. We're gonna set we're gonna set our stairs there. We're actually gonna set our px and py in there. So, um, but we should still need a best. Um, let's go best first zero. Or let's call it um, high. Let's call it high. High is zero. Okay, so um, if, oh, not, this map is wrong. This is the wrong, uh, it's calc dist, I think was the, was the, was the calc dist, yeah, that was the one. Okay, so we calculate the distance map and then if, if dist map x, y is greater than high, then, px py equals um, xy. We're just like putting our stairs furthest away from this random spot on the map, which means it should be kind of like somewhere in a in a spot that is kind of not easily like not not easy to reachable. It kind of like puts us on the edge of the map. So maybe some kind of like dead end or something. Um, so let's see how that works. Okay, see, now we're like in this corner there. 
losing our religion. It's kind of weird how every no, okay, every map kind of put us in the in the right corner. Ah, of course it put us in the right corner. Let's see. Yeah, because we're not setting high to the dist map. Um, let's use a temporary variable here so we don't have to call it this map again. I'm not sure if I'm actually saving tokens this way, but I think I do. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, there's a bit of an issue where um, I'm always set, set in a wall, which is actually kind of okay. Uh, it's kind of like a side effect of the way we're doing um, collision detection. Um, because the collision detection, you might remember, collision detection uh, always looked for the distance in one tile into a wall. So we can do something like if is walk able and It's interesting because now we're not not necessarily like in somewhere in a corner, but now we're like sometimes like in the middle of the which is which to me is is weird. Why is that so? It's odd, but I guess it's okay. Uh, if uh, us appearing in a corner of a room kind of seems logical to me. Like this, yeah, that's 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 what what would happen, yeah, right? Because you know. In order for the distance map to calculation to work, you know, you have to like walk all the way to this entrance and so forth. So yeah, we should be appearing in corners of rooms. If you're appearing in a hallway like this, that's also understandable, but it's weird if you're appearing in the middle of a room. And I saw that just, just now, so I was like, okay. Okay, no, no, it seems, it seems to be going good. Good. Next step. Now we have to find the stairs so the stairs is going to be something like this we're going to do another calc dist pxpy another but you know now we have like a different position and we could technically um we are looping through this once one more time it's basically the same thing so we might put it in a in a variable but we won't just yet just, you just wait it's, it's gonna be great um, and we make a, a new set of a variable called ex and ey. This, this is going to be the exit, basically. And so, yeah, we, we're looking for ex, ey, just like just just in case, you know, just um, temporarily. Uh, high equals zero here, so we're resetting this entire process. And I want to set the stairs now. Um, and it's going to be at ex, ey. So it's going to be the position furthest away from our character and we're going to use these stairs 14. So now you see kind of like oh okay you can now actually go through this but this actually exemplifies a, pro um, a good a good problem that I have. So this is great I can like walk here ah okay I see the problem if I bump against the edge of the map I, I create like a weird oh this is fascinating that was that why it it had like this. If I bump against this, it basically undoes. A... I'm not sure why, but I love it. It's great. It's that's such a weird bug. Look at this. If I bump against the edge of the map, it. Oh, it carves. Yes, I remember. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that's funny though. Um, so that was here. Remember, I, I kind of like had this function here. I did actually the carve the worm function when I bumped against the wall. That was in gameplay. Um, just to maze worm. I did that because to just to show you know um, how the how the maze function works as you worm yourself through the level. Um, but now we don't need that anymore. Okay, good. So let me show you a good example. So this is great because, you know, we're starting here and then we kind of like go through here and then, you know, there's going to be a stairs in this room. That's that's fantastic. Uh, this is also okay. This is fine. Uh, that was actually bad. Uh, let me get one. Other one. Of course, now it doesn't, it doesn't come. That's fine. Now, of course, now when you need it, when you need it. 
all of these are such great levels. Oh, um, not necessarily great levels, but good levels. They're they're good boys. Oh, I, lo I love this little nook there. Why is it there? In oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that was actually bad. Okay, no. I, okay, so this is a good example. So now we have this problem that with the the you see how the stairs is like it's it's in the open. It's like in the uh, like it's in the hallway. So if I'm ever running down this hallway and I actually want to continue exploring, it's kind of like the the stairway is in the way. I have to go up up the stairs because if I step on the stairs, I will be in the next level, and I don't like that. I want the going um, like entering the stairs to be like a conscious decision where there is like yes, I'm one. I want to step on those stairs now. I want to step on those stairs. So so I want to actually create the stairs in an alcove somewhere. In kind of like a whoop, like kind of like a little area um, where you actually have to press a button to enter them. You actually have to go towards them to enter them, and they're not just in the way. They sh in other words, the stairs should be in a dead end. And we just removed all of the dead ends. So, <sighs> man, like, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> so how are we going to do that? So um, we're going to use the same uh, function, the can, can carve function, to find a, a carvable spot. For um for us to just we're gonna carve a little alcove out for our little stair function, so as we're going through this, we're gonna look for tiles that are not walkable. So we're gonna say if not is walkable. Actually, we don't need that. Uh, we can just go here and be like, if TMP is greater than high and um can carve uh, X Y comma false not walkable then so we're looking for tiles that are not walkable where um, the distance is higher than our, our high so that are f far away from our starting position that are not walkable and that are carvable so if we carve in there we're not going to cause a, a, a breakthrough And now we can see the stairs up there in this um, in this room, but it's in its own alcove. I mean, in the room it wouldn't probably cause a problem, but um, but still, it's kind of like it's it has like its little spot, its, its tiny little thing, uh, that makes it a little bit better. Uh, so this is great. Look, this is that did exactly what we wanted. Where if the stairs was in this hallway, we would have to go up the stairs if we want to go down this hallway. This would be kind of in a way. But now it's kind of like. To the side of the hallway so we actually have to go you know to the side here if you want to go um, up the stairs and we can still go down the hallway that was the basic my idea here i don't like how sometimes when we spawn like the entrance sometimes is like in the middle of the hallway that also s feels bad to me right So I would maybe even tweak the post starting position here. So initially what I did is I basically had the same kind of a test for um, for the starting position. I also made the starting position in an alcove somewhere. Um, might be good, might not be good. Um, I'm not sure. I, I really don't like the look of us starting in a hallway. That's, that's my only problem because it's kind of like seems odd. That's not where a stair would be. I don't mind too much if a stair is kind of like in a corner. So like if there was a starting position here or if there was a stair here, I wouldn't mind that too much. Um, so we might actually use later on, we can like use maybe more refined, sophisticated signature scanning thing that is like, okay, either way, either we're gonna carve a rule, like a space out or we um, gonna make sure that it's, uh, you know, uh, somewhat like in a free space and then not down the hallway. Um, we're gonna, gonna make a, like a hallway check function that makes sure that we're not in the hallway. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna use the same kind of um, procedure that I use in a prototype, where it's like, I'm gonna carve out um, alcoves, both for the, um, um, both for the starting um, and for the, for the, for the entry and for the exit.
So uh, I'm gonna use high and low here. So again, we're kind of like also repositioning the starting location. So we're gonna go if temp is smaller than low and low starts at 9,999, which should be, should be good. Um, and I can carve then px equals p, uh, py equals the position and low equals temp. Stuff like that. And if you do this, it doesn't work. Why? Ah, the same problem I always have, like the, p the px and py were, were switched around. Still doesn't work though. Uh, oh, I know the problem. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we set it so that um, when it's um, with the distance map, the way it is works is um, if if it doesn't find a connection, it, it's minus one. So we want to make sure it's not minus one. So we're going to go if TMP is not equals um, minus one and or is, if it's uh, greater than zero, let's call it greater than zero. Um, yeah, no, let's let's go greater greater equals zero. Okay, now it works. So you can see now we're always starting in an alcove somewhere. I again, I don't really, I'm not really fan of the starting position, so we might actually tweak this later on. Um, but for now, that's fine. The only problem is like you know every start that I ever have in this game is going to be moving one space. Um, so I might just as well have started here. So it's kind of like weird. Um, so we might actually, I kind of like this because it's like you're not starting in a hallway, but instead if you're going out here. So that's that seems more natural a little bit. Um, but in the case of a room, I would rather maybe start in this in this corner position. Um, but you know, that's maybe something that, that we're gonna like at later. Maybe that's something that you actually gonna add if you want to. Um, but yeah, that was it for um, for the starting and end position. And that's kind of like a preliminary thing, but that I think it does a uh, does a good job. I will I can like combine things a little bit here, and be like TMP here, and here as well. TMP, something like this. Here, the high can also become TMP. But you see, it's kind of like an expensive function because it's like two, four next loops, and there's not really. W there is, there might be some ways of making this more efficient, but uh, it's kind of difficult. But yeah. And yeah, this is going to be just like a preliminary thing. Good. Um, there's still some time left, so maybe we can think about how are we going to do doors? Doors. Because so far, uh, we have like this little level and everything is beautiful, but, but you know, th there's no doors and we had like doors in our, our preview and that was actually pretty cool because, you know, we could, um, we would approach a room and open a door and then we'd see what's inside the room and you wouldn't like, like look in the room while, while we're approaching it. Um, easy peasy. It's actually super easy to make those doors. But first, let let me um, let me do one thing that I th think is important. Um, so when we're generating the map, um, I want to create a new uh, public array called door. It's called doors. Uh, we're gonna create doors, and we're gonna put the doors. Uh, wait, no, no, not doors. What I'm saying, rooms. We're gonna save all of the rooms. And another thing, we're gonna make a room room map equals blank map. We're gonna fill it with zeros. So what are these? Rooms are, we are generating rooms already. I wanna just keep track of them further down the line. We're just using them here and you know, we're not doing anything. We're generating the rooms, we're placing them and that's it, we're not doing anything with them. So what I want to do instead now, uh, I guess when I when I place a room here, that's that's here's where I place the room. This is where I would add the room to our room array. So we're gonna do um, um, rooms uh, add rooms dot r comma r. Just so all of the rooms that have been placed are gonna be in an array. Just so I have like the dimension and positions of all of the rooms. This will come handy later on when we start decorating the rooms. 
that's one part. And another part is I, I have like this room map. And again, this is going to be a map that basically just counts, um, keeps track uh, if a given tile belongs to a room. And so here where we're actually placing a room, I'm going to go room map. This part, that's not very efficient, but I think creating a variable here won't actually save any tokens, so whatever. Um, so room map, uh, so forth and so forth, equals uh, the number of rooms, the, this, the current room entry. Nothing changed, but uh, we're going to draw this on, on the map. Again, going for a similar function that we had before, and we're just gonna print room room map. Um, oh no! Wait, wait. Okay, um, print room map. And at this position. with a red color. Nothing happened. Um, yeah, because that's not dependent on the fog. That's always something that we do. Okay, so you see um, now we created like a room mat and you can actually see that the rooms are also working. So, you know, the room with the, with the stairs now is the room number one. And you can see that all the tiles are marked with one. And the room with um, next to it is the four, then two, and then the room where we're starting out is room number three. They're not necessarily, you know, in the order that we're going through them. Okay, so far so good. And so now the only thing that we're doing is when we are, remember when we did the doors, when we like made shortcuts? Every time we do a shortcut, we just wanna make sure that if that um, that is some a tile next to a room, that if the room map of uh, the, the neighboring room maps of that tile are are set to a room, then we're gonna place a door in there. So like every hallway that leads to a room will have a door. Um, now we don't really have a function to do that real quickly, and we're gonna have at, at least two places where we do this because there's two places where we're carving things. Once when we're carving the shortcuts, and the other one where we're carving um, when we're co combining areas with each other, right? Um, so I'm going to create a new function here. I'm going to put it uh, here at uh, a door doorways because it's, uh, it's, it fits to doorways. I'm going to call this function is door um, x y. gonna go for i equals one to four do and and we're gonna go um, if door no, uh, door um, room map square brackets square brackets it's not equal zero then return true and and otherwise return false so we just need to fill in those entries here so it's gonna be x plus then we use again our beautiful, marvelous little array here, i, and this. Uh, there is a bit of an issue. We have to make sure we will be out of bounds um, here. So, hmm. Um, uh, let's see which one costs less tokens. So first I'm going to create this fun this version. Mm. If in bounds and So this is going to be this version of it. Just making sure that the tile we're looking at is actually in bounds and if it's in bounds then we're going to see if the room map is set to set is not set to zero if, if that's the case then we return returning true 
Um, so how many tokens is this? You know what? First, we're going to optimize this later. First, we're going to actually use this function. Maybe it, maybe it's it's wrong. Um, so first here. If is door dx dy, then else so. And I think we can this is this is this is something we can optimize. For example, this M set we could do it only one, but a variable. I'm not sure. Okay, so if it's a door, we're gonna place the door, that's gonna be this one, that's gonna be 13. And we're going to have like a very similar um, issue here when we are setting um, this guy here. Easy, right? And here we could even keep track of the doors. We could even put the doors in an array and so we know exactly which, which doors we have in our... Uh, okay. <laughs> Not what I wanted. Uh, hmm. That's funny. So um, the problem is that if we start making the doors, um, it actually they're not walkable. So what happens is the um, the fill ends function fills in all the all the tunnels underneath, right? So um, so the doors look as if they're like carved into nothing because there was like a hallway behind it, but that hallway is kind of like collapsed in on itself because of the fill ends function. I think I think that's the problem. Um, because if we if we use a walk, if we make the the floor the wall walkable. Let's see what is a walkable tile. Um, I guess red is the. Let's make the door walkable. Yeah, and then it looks fine, right? Um, where is it? Yeah, we have fill ends on now, and then we're gonna put in bring bit back everything right so let's try that yeah no, so now it looks clean right but the reason why it looks clean is um, is because the is walkable tile no longer recognizes the walls as um, not walkable, and again later we only get like this function that fill in fills in dead ends, and that function kind of well, like would make all of these guys collapse, and actually would create a lot of more doors because that all means also that parts would be separated that wouldn't be otherwise separated. So we can actually there's multiple workarounds. We could have like a is walkable function that ignores doors could be a solution, um, but we could actually um, have a doors array. And we're gonna add those doors to the array. And later on, when we are finished with filling ends, we're gonna uh, place the doors. That's, 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 uh, that would also work as a solution. So let me see, uh, we're gonna go, uh, place room, um, matching, can carve, there we go. No, not cat and carf here. Um, so we're gonna go doors. We're gonna add every door that that we carved out. We're gonna add this to our to our thing. Everyone, and we're setting it to this, right? Just adding the door that says just X, Y, and and some other stuff. And do we put this in the other function as well? Here is the here's the other function, and we're setting it to empty. And then, we, then we're gonna have a function that's gonna be like install doors or something. Start int install doors. And that will actually place the doors. So. Um, Function install doors and um, so we will now loop through this doors array and we're gonna see if this is walkable, if it still exists as a doorway, and if it is actually adjacent to a room. So we're gonna go for d in all doors do 
if uh, is walkable d dot x d dot y and is door d dot x d dot y then and I'm gonna go and set d dot x d dot y and we're gonna put in the door that's gonna be 13. like so still there is one downstairs that is bad these are fine i'm looking for bad bad looking doors <laughs> yeah there was one that was looking odd but otherwise i'm, I'm fine with what i'm seeing Yeah, no, these are looking fine. Sometimes there's a door that is a bit too close to another door. For example, these doors down here, they look a bit odd. They're kind of like seem, seem a bit close together. Um, so yeah, something you can actually do is um, even create like, like a map to the next nearest door, make sure that, you know, doors are not too close to each other. Um, like, yeah, this, this kind of like weird situation here, maybe we would um, do like a scan for a door in nearby locations. Uh, we could actually scan other doors, or other possible doors, because we have the door array. Um, maybe. Maybe. But maybe that's fine. Maybe that's just like the way things are. Okay, guys. This is going to be it. So we made the doors, we made the entrance and exit, so we're kind of like also slowly creating this level. Um, things that are still missing in our level is <clears throat> monsters, <clears throat> um, decorations, uh, items, um, and also it would be kind of nice, oh, this is bad, look, see, there's a door right next to another door. That's where I, mean, where I would say, like, eh, if it's adjacent to a door, don't place a door. Yeah, placing doors adjacent to doors is bad, is bad mojo. So maybe that's something we, we have to add next. All right, so let me let me put down a, a to-do list. No doors next to doors. Uh, we can actually do a is door function. We can make use that function to check if there is a door nearby. <clears throat> that would be a solution. We need monsters. We need items, and we need decorations like vases and stuff like that. Stuff like that. But maybe even before we do that, uh, advancing to the next level. Ascending the level, I mean, because it's like, you know, you can like go through this level now, that's great. But if you enter the stairs, nothing happens. And so it would be nice if we enter the stairs, you know, we would actually go upstairs and and, and uh, solve the level. That would be that would be at most excellent. Okay, but that's something that comes up in the next episode. Uh, so again, as always, the code for today's episode is going to be down there in doobly doo as downloadable p8 hour a file, or thanks to OMG Mog, uh, also as GitHub. Uh, repository so you can check that out as, as well um, there is going to be t-shirts uh, down there that you can uh, buy to support this um, channel if you want to just if you want to it's, it's you know it's it's up to you um, and also of course um, there's gonna be a discord and you should join our discord because it's a great place to hang out and uh, maybe you have some better ideas for how to generate stuff for example I'm some of the I think some of the rooms here, for example, there's two really big rooms. I don't like the size of those rooms. So maybe we're gonna tweak the, the room generation a little bit so there's like one big room and then smaller rooms on top of that. Let's see about that. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.